The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. In the year 2000, Ben Heckendorn built his first mod. We can rebuild it. Smaller. Better. Portable. Since then, he has continued his work, helping those in need with creative new projects. If you've got an idea you'd like to see built, why not send it to The Ben Heck Show? Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. In today's episode, we're going to be making the coolest Xbox laptop yet. Let's get started. Xbox 360 laptop. So here are the major components that we need in order to build one. We need an LCD screen of some kind. We need the Xbox 360 motherboard and DVD and they're paired to each other, so we have to use ones that come of us as a set. Audio amplifier and speakers, normally that would be in your TV. LCD probably won't have one, so we have to come up with another way to make the audio amplified. And finally, a power supply. Hopefully we can use the existing power supply and not have to beef it up. So the plan is, find a good LCD, one that's thin, which means it'll be LED backlit. Take apart and mod the Xbox 360, give it a new AV out that'll go to the LCD, and then of course move the ring of light and make sure everything else in it it's kind of flattened out. Design a cool case, and then build it. Now we need some sort of audio amplifier for built-in stereo sound. I've got this one, it's made by Texas Instruments. This is the audio amplifier, and the nice thing about this is you can put uh, stereo inputs into it and control it, the volume level, with just one input. And that's why we have this digital potentiometer here. Now this one actually is button controlled, so every time you click a button, it goes up or down, the wiper does. So this combined with this will give us our audio amplifier. So I'll get that wired up. And then here we're going to have power, eject, sync, volume down and volume up. And then we can kind of combine it with the ring of light board inside our unit. So I'll get this wired up. It has a right input and a left input so we can do the stereo for you. And then you can control them both with one input here from the digital audio converter or potentiometer. So basically this pin, if it's closer to five volts, it's loud, if it's closer to ground, it's quiet. Pretty easy to use package. I've got the audio amplifier hooked up. This shows how much power the audio amplifier is using. If you turn it all the way up, it uses, it's approaching half an amp, 500 milliamps. So one of the reasons I'm gonna ditch the hard drive on this unit is because a little portable hard drive like that takes about 500 milliamps power at five volts and we're going to use that instead for the audio amplifier. This will allow us to power everything, the stuff we're adding and included, on the existing Xbox 360 power brick. So we use the connect power for the screen and the hard drive power for the audio. So here are the parts of the Xbox. We're going to put them all together and make sure they work and then we'll design a case around it. I took this from the hard drive connector. I'm going to plug it in and see what its pinout is. It's probably five volts in ground and we can use that to power our audio amplifier. And also we're going to need to check on the ring of light. We one of the two of these pins, one of them does power and one of them does eject. You don't need the capacitance sensor, which is what these are. So yeah, we'll figure that out as well. But then we can move on and do some more of the wiring and then have it ready to be made into a case. So to bypass the touch controls, we can actually use this. This is ground and if you touch that one, it turns off and on the power. And if you touch that one, it ejects the disc as so. Of course, you gotta just tap it. There we go. Disc. So we can use that connection to wire up our normal buttons instead of the touch controls. Now I'm putting together the screen. I routed some Sintra, and now I'm attaching these custom hinges that I made using the MakerBot replicator. Here is the front plate that I lasered for it. Pull the plastic out. So I can still recycle that plastic in the middle but I'll still charge you for it. Okay, so here is our main design of the Xbox 360 new laptop. What we're going to do now is separate the pieces so we can route the frame for it. So what we do is we turn off our layers and that reveals the insides. So we're gonna do a few layers at a time. We're gonna start with layer one, then we will route layer two, and then finally layer three. And then something else you might notice by looking at these layers 
is that they're in pieces. Since these are, are just walls, we don't have to route it as a big solid rectangle. We can break them up like this, and then we can nest them so it requires less material to route. So we'll get that routed and then we'll uh, do a rough assemble and see if it's gonna work. So here's our plastic pieces. Now we're just going to rough it together just to make sure everything basically fits. So we have our Xbox here. Wi-Fi module we'll have to put in manually. Wires here. These should butt up here. Here. These come right up to the back because there's going to be a rear plate for accessing the ports. Here's a DVD drive. The DVD drive has a custom 3D printed door on it. I made it so it could just clip onto the existing molding. This has got areas to hold the DVD drive in place. So, okay. And then this piece goes here. No, this piece goes here. No, wait, this piece goes. I don't know what's going on anymore. Now, there's an opening here, and that's where the new fans are gonna go, because we're gonna replace that fan. Here is a fan holder that I 3D printed. So the fans have arrows on them, which tell you which way the air moves when you hook them up, so. You can snap these into place. This is David Cross, local entrepreneur here in Madison. We've worked on a couple projects in the past and he's gonna help us assemble the Xbox today. Don't build anything you can't take apart. Get ready to see a heck of a lot more of me in season three. Okay, so I made this on the laser for the ring of light. I did a raster layer at a low DPI to kind of rough up the plastic to diffuse it so the lights can shine through. And then these spots are where we can glue it on the other side of the case. So this will kind of transfer through the ring of light. See? That way the ring of light can be attached to the motherboard, which is what uh, Dave is working on right now. So there's one less thing connected between the top half and the bottom half. Because connectors just mean more wiring and more money. Now it's time to put everything together. We're adding some ribbon cable headers to the audio amplifier board so that the system buttons, power eject and sync, can be connected to the ring of light, which is staying on the motherboard at the lower half of the unit. The top half of the case contains the amplifier board and speakers. At the rear of the unit, we attach a laser plate to identify the external ports. Now comes the task of arranging wires to fit nicely in the case. It's a balancing act of making them long enough so you can open up the unit, but short enough so they all fit when it's closed. The LCD's driver board is mounted here as well. Not only is the bottom of the case aluminum, but we retain the main RF shield from the Xbox as well, keeping all of the components stable and tight. Next, we're installing the fans and making sure all of the USB ports line up. Stop nuts are used to secure the motherboard so they won't loosen from motion or travel. Finally, the halves are lowered together slowly so we can see if everything fits and goes to plan. It fits! The final touch are some custom lasered buttons for the system controls. Dave and I got the Xbox 360 laptop all put together, so now I can give you a demonstration of it and talk about some of the features and design concepts.
We wanted it to be thin, that's why we use the LED backlit LCD. Remember, most of the thickness of an LCD monitor comes from the uh, AC to DC wall power conversion and also the cold cathode tube uh, inverter circuitry. And then down here we have the Xbox and we have the fan coming out to the side instead of over the top, which means this can be as thin as possible too. So the unit is two and an eighth inches thick total, which is pretty small. I pushed the motherboard as far back as possible so many ports could be available. We have the USB, Ethernet, HDMI, optical, and of course power in. There are two things we covered up. One of them is the old analog AV jack. We covered that up because that's what we're using for our screen. We don't want that to be, you know, get interference. Secondly, I covered up the Kinect sensor. The 12 volt power that powers the Kinect, we're diverting that to the screen so we don't want you to hook up a Kinect up because we don't want there to be danger of the power supply being overloaded. So it uses the existing normal Xbox 360 Slim power brick. So I'm gonna turn on the unit. We have a nice backlit logo here, <laughs> which is all the rage these days. The diffusion on the ring of light works pretty good. It doesn't look too harsh. Uh, has kind of a futuristic uh, grainy look, which is cool. One thing I omitted on this was the built-in hard drive. This just uses the $199 Xbox with the four gigs built in, although it looks like they ship it with games now. Peggle and, uh, of course, Hexic. Oh, Risk Faction, that's kind of cool. I omitted the physical hard drive for several reasons. Number one, it takes up space. Number two, it creates heat. Number three, it requires uh, power, five volts, that I am now using for the audio amplifier instead. Uh, number four, you know, there's cloud storage now for all the games, or you can use any thumb drive and format it as an Xbox memory card. So, it just seemed like in the year 2012, a physical hard drive for game storage was out of date. The front two USB slots are preserved as well, so there's plenty of spots to put in your memory cards, so I think it'll be all right. Remember, this is supposed to be a portable on-the-road unit, so figured it didn't need all the features. Here's something I'm kind of proud of. I took off the original door from the DVD drive and I 3D printed my own door with slots so you can slide it right onto the existing plastic. The 3D print allowed us to have the same curve of the unit here so it kind of matched the contours. And I printed it at a very fine resolution so you can barely see the lines. It worked out pretty good. Oh, 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 oh! The goal here was to make a new Xbox 360 laptop and make it as small as possible. I've built these in the past, but they've been much larger than this. Uh, part of what helped me was finding this nice 16 inch widescreen LCD that's also LED backlit, which is actually kind of a rare find to be honest. So yeah, I think I did a pretty good job making this thing nice and uh, small. It's uh, only 16 by nine, <laughs> get it, by two inches deep. So I think it worked out pretty good. So there it is, the latest and greatest and probably last model Xbox 360 laptop. Closing the book on it. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we're going to be taking on a viewer challenge to create a device that will prevent teens from texting while driving. We'll see you then. Thanks to your feedback, we're making some changes to our show. Stay tuned for new weekly episodes of The Ben Heck Show starting in November.